The world would be in an awful mess if we didn't have standard units of measure. Accurate measures help to keep us honest. Some things are more difficult to measure, but there are clues that will give us a rough measurement. Dishonest people, though, they, they hate measurements. They make excuses and play tricks to avoid being measured. They know that if they measured themselves, then what they want to believe about themselves would be proven wrong. To keep ourselves honest, though, we need to measure ourselves, even in things like faith and love, which can be measured if you know how. So, let's measure our faith in Jesus. One way we can do this is by measuring ourselves against his teachings to figure out how many teachings we actually do. After all, if we had faith in Buddha, we'd do his teachings, so why would it be any different with Jesus' teachings? If you'd like to measure your faith, please follow along as I read out these 10 different teachings of Jesus one by one. After I read out each teaching, I will then ask you a question about what you do to practice that teaching. Please keep track of how many questions you get right, aka teachings you practice. Number 1. Matthew 23, verse 9. Call no man on earth father. Do you call anyone on earth father? Remember that words like dad and pope, they're just variations of the word father. If you do call anyone on earth father, please mark this question as incorrect. Number 2. Mark 10, verse 11 through 12. Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. Have you divorced your first husband or wife and married another person? If so, please mark this question as wrong. Number 3. Matthew 6, verse 5 through 6. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the street corners, to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. When you pray, do you pray out loud in religious meetings for others to hear, or do you do it secretly so that others won't see or know that you are praying? If you don't try to pray secretly, then please mark this question as incorrect. Number 4. Luke 6, verse 27 through 28. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. Do you love your enemies and pray for those who mistreat you? Does this include political enemies and soldiers and armies that oppose your country? If you don't try to love your enemies or pray for those who mistreat you, then please mark this question as incorrect. Number 5. Matthew 18, verse 15 through 17. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault, just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Do you ever talk about people behind their backs? Or do you go through these three steps that Jesus told us to follow when we have a disagreement? If you don't follow these three steps, then please mark this question as incorrect. Number 6. Matthew 28, verse 19 through 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Have you shared Jesus' teachings with other people this past week? And did that include teaching them to obey what he taught? If you haven't, please mark this question as wrong. Number 7. Luke 17, verse 3. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. If they repent, forgive them. If someone treats you wrongly and sincerely asks you for forgiveness, do you forgive them? 
Please think of the worst thing someone has done to you and then ask you for forgiveness for. Did you forgive them for it? If not, please mark this question as incorrect. Number 8. Matthew 6, verse 24. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Do you work at a job, even part-time, to make money? Would you still do it if you were not paid for it? Jesus said that you cannot work for both God and money at the same time. So, since Jesus said that you can't serve two masters at the same time, if you still work at a paying job, then please mark your question as incorrect. Number 9. Matthew 5, verse 33 through 37. Again, you have heard that it was said to people long ago, Do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair, white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Have you made any promises, sworn any oaths, or pledged allegiance to anyone lately? If so, please mark this question as wrong. Number 10. Luke 14, verse 33. He who does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Have you ever given up everything you own in obedience to what Jesus taught here? If not, please mark this question as incorrect. So now that we've measured ourselves against some of Jesus' teachings, please take the time to count up how many questions you have gotten incorrect. Oh, and also, if you have any questions about what I've said or asked so far, then please write them in the comments section below. Now, if you've counted up the amount of questions you have gotten incorrect and aren't proud of the results, you still have time to start practicing. So keep measuring your faith and trying to improve. This is the whole reason why we measure our faith. Jesus' teachings aren't easy to measure ourselves against, and even I didn't get a perfect score. But measurements keep us honest, and that is why Jesus will return and measure the whole world by what he taught. So keep measuring your faith and trying to obey Jesus and perhaps even link up with us. Working with others who are trying to measure themselves against what Jesus taught is a great way to measure yourself as well. Measuring yourself may sound scary, but it's the only way to honestly improve. So if we want to make sure that we'll measure up to Jesus' standard on Judgment Day, then the best way to do that is to help each other out by measuring ourselves and each other by Jesus' standard now. 